Hi and welcome to this video and in this one we're going to be looking at the animation controls in the track editor which is a new feature in 113 of Velostrone and it's these three buttons here and then this speed setting here. So what we're going to do is we're going to animate something uh, yeah, relatively interesting it's going to be this little go-kart here so we're going to get this go-kart and put it on our spline like that. So there we go there's our go-kart on the spline and what we want to do is we want to animate this go-kart on the spline so we're going to click on it and you can see here that there's a button that says static if I click that it will change to moving and you can see that immediately it said that it's in loop mode and what loop mode means that when it gets to the end it will try to travel back to the start point now on this particular spline what that means is it's going to go down there and then it's going to turn around and travel back and then it's going to start again because it's a looping animation. We can do reverse which basically means it goes down one end of the spline and back again which sounds like it's the same as loop but it's not which I'll come to explain in a moment. And then there's once and basically what once does is it will travel all the way down to the end and then it will disappear and start traveling from the beginning again all the way down to the end so once is kind of track through disappear start the beginning track through disappear start the beginning reverse is go down and come back again and loop it will look like it's go down and come back again but I'll show you another spline at the moment that will make clear how loop is actually different we'll come on to that in a moment so if I click play now on once what you'll see is that the cart moves down the spline and if we give it a moment it'll get all the way to the end like that and then it goes back to the beginning now all objects on a spline when they initially start their animation in flight mode will start right at the beginning of the spline so even if you were to put multiple objects on here so if I was to put a cube on here as well and animate that say so that's moving as well and once and I play that one okay so now you can see that basically when I go to flight mode my go-kart and my cube are going to move along this spline at the same time so I'm hardly going to see the go-kart because there's a cube on top of it so how do we fix that how do we make it so that the things start in different places well the way we do that is you can offset an object on a spline so if I just press L to get into local coordinates and I just move that cube down a little bit like that that's now offset that from its start position so now when I go to flight mode these two will move down this spline at the same speed but you have to bear in mind that when they get to the end this block here is going to travel beyond the end by that distance there between the two from the start of the spline to how much I offset it it's going to travel beyond it down there and we can show that so if I click play you should see that this will go beyond the end point there we go and then back to its start position you can see because I've offset it it's no longer starting right at the beginning of the spline like this go-kart is okay so what if we want these two objects to move at different speeds well you can change the speed here so if I set that one to 15 for instance you can now see that one set to 15 and if I click on that one it's set to 7.2 so this one will move at 7.2 and this one 
We'll move at 15. And you can see objects that are animated don't collide with one another. They'll quite happily drive through each other, scenery, whatever gets in their way, they'll just go straight through it. However, these objects do have colliders on them that will affect a quad. So if you hit these with your quad, you will bounce off. So I said I'd come back and explain the difference between... So if I just delete this object here, let me just change this to reverse. Oops, select the object to do it. Select the object, change it to reverse, and let's get this going at 40 kilometers an hour. So this value here is in kilometers an hour. Forget the meters and feet, this is in kilometers an hour. If I click play, you can see that this is going to reverse this time. There we go, and it is reversing all the way back up again. Now if I set it to loop, you see it goes all the way down. And see so he's turned around to come back. And that's one of the differences between loop and reverse is that in loop it will basically try and navigate from the end point back to the beginning point and it will point the object whatever way it needs to go in order to do that. Whereas when you're doing a reverse it's literally going to go down and then reverse back again so the orientation won't change and then of course once so once it's just down to the end and back like that loop down to the end and then it will try to navigate back to the first point so the cart turns around and then reverse is down and then reverse back up now in flight mode, these all of these animations won't stop. When the when it gets back to here, it will then start again. So they continually loop no matter what. They're continually running. So they don't ever just play the once and stop like they do in the editor. In the editor, we just play them once and stop because we don't want to take up processing power running them all the time. So you can kind of check what they do and then they stop. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get rid of this spline. So let's do a shift D to get rid of that and we'll get rid of this cart as well and I'm going to put a new spline on here and just show you the difference between loop and reverse so let's do that like that select that and we'll get our cart again and put him on here so this is the direction I drew the spline, so that's the direction things are going to animate. Now if I select my cart, change him to moving, so that the speed is then shown. Set him to 40 kilometers an hour. And we'll leave him on loop. So what you should see is it'll go all the way around and then it will travel from this end point back to the beginning here. Like that. So it's actually gone beyond. You may not be able to see that very easily, but if I was to just kind of back this up a bit like that and then click play again. Look, so you can see it's traveling across that distance, whereas if I change this to reverse, Now you may have noticed that there was some messing about going on over here and that's because I've I've moved these points around after drawing the spline and this is one of the one of the gotchas with animation is that if you're going to lay down a spline for an object to animate on it you want to do it in one go and then not adjust it because when you start moving these points around you can then you can mess up the orientation of the of the spline and then an object animating on it may do some odd things so if I just delete this and just show you that if I put this spline back in again and I just do it in one hit this time like so so all in one hit exactly how I want it 
Put my go kart on. Set him to moving. 40 kilometers an hour. Play. And this time you should see that there's no funny movements or hesitations in the movement. It should all be nice and smooth. Like that. And you can see it's traversed that distance back to the beginning again. If I set it on reverse. And then he's going to reverse his way all the way back. Like so. And then if I put it on once, it's basically going to jump this gap at the end. Bosh, like that. Okay, so you, you can also offset in any direction you want. So I showed you like pulling the cart like this to offset it but you could actually offset it like this as well so now he'll drive around the inside here same offset all the way around like that. so you can use offsets for all kinds of things Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's animating with splines, and you can have more than one spline, you can have more than one object on a spline, uh, and set up your animations any, any way you wish. As I say, the only, the only gotcha, or the only thing to kind of be aware of, is to try and draw your spline how you want it in just one go, because if you start editing these points, particularly if you start adding points to your spline, then you mess up the orientations on the spline and then you may get some funny movement in the animation so try and draw your, your movement out exactly how you want it in one go and if you don't get it right delete the whole spline and do it again okay so that's it and i'll see you on the next video